And now, uh, 49 days to go to the elections already. The political parties have been busy in every nook and cranny of the country, selling their messages and hoping to convince the millions to vote for them come December 7. Let's check out what the president has been up to today in the voting region. He is continuing his five-day tour of that region. Um, Ivy Sitterji is our correspondent following the president with an update now. Ivy, good afternoon to you. We know the president was in Pasada this morning. What has he been up to today? Hello? Ivy, can you hear me? Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Francis. Yeah, so we know the president has been to Passat today. What has he been talking about? Well, the president has been talking about the road. Uh, he said um, he's trying to address the, the road problem. He has given two good documentaries to the construction on the road, construction that road, that construction road, to get back to the site of his contract exterminated. So that's what the president has been talking about. He said that he will do he's doing his best to make sure that a lot is provided for the people of the whole town carry those in the northern whole town. So that is what the president has been talking about. And Pasa and Ufansa is currently going to take the before a similar rally. Okay, and uh, in all of this, um, tell me something, Ivy. What's been the response of the people in the area as the president continues to deliver his message to them? The people, what they want is their roles to be fixed, especially one linking back to the other area. That road, that part of the road is very, very bad and most terrible. So they are asking a question to make sure that the roads are fixed for them. And also they are asking uh, of uh, help facilities to be provided and some of the communities because it is very difficult to get help facilities. And to get, where the help facilities is situated, it's far, far, far from the township. So they are asking for them to do all this. They just to to give him a second part. They want him to be able to make sure that most of the things that he promised them is good or he said all the promises that make to them doing the campaign. So and that is what the, the, the people have been talking about. And they also say that they hope that these uh, promises are not one of his uh, campaign promises. Uh, they, they really want him to do something else about their fight, especially in the northern part of the coastal region. All right. Uh, thank you, Ivy Sessage, for that update from uh, the Voter Region. The president continuing his five-day tour of that region. Uh, it's been a busy day for him. He began uh, the tour yesterday. It's for five days. It will end on Friday. We'll see what the reactions would be and the kind of messages he's been uh, giving to the people as we all prepare with 49 days to go to election 2016. And remember, everything election, coverage of it is live on your election headquarters on uh, Joy News, on Multi TV, also on all our multimedia platforms, uh, on radio, television, and online. Still related to elections, the lawyers for the Electoral Commission have filed an abridgment of time to hear the Progressive People's Party's lawsuit. The court is likely to sit on Thursday to hear the motion. Today, the EC has been addressing the media at a training workshop in Accra where they raised concerns about the possibility of the suit brought against it by the PPP affecting the election calendar. Uh, we'll get to hear more from them in just a moment, but uh, Jennifer Kramer was on that program for us for Joy News. She joins me now in the studio. Thank you for coming, uh, Jennifer, today. Oh, welcome. Uh, so today at this program, what is fueling their concerns that the lawsuits can affect the date for the elections? Well, you know, the EC has its calendar that it follows, especially during the election period and around this time they should be starting with the printing of the ballot papers three weeks from now they'll start with the training of their officers but the printing of the ballot papers is what has caused the Great Accra regional chairman to say that time is of the essence the, the, because of the lawsuits they are reluctant to move forward with all the activities that they have to do particularly with this ballot paper issue and you know when the printing of the ballot papers delays then it also de it can also affect the December 7 date so they are trying their absolute best I mean on their end to make sure that they print the ballot papers within their stipulated calendar without anything untowards happening so for the greater uh, regional chairman you spoke to what mm -hmm. did he have to say about this 
Well, he said, you know, for, on his part, there's nothing they can actually do about the lawsuits except, you know, see them through. Their only hope is that they are resolved as quickly as possible because they do not want to see an instance of there being a pushback in the December 7 date. We know that election is a, a time-bound activity. And I think uh, from today we have about uh, 49 days to the election, and so time is of essence. So the lawsuits, uh, they are quite a border, but the commission will know how to handle them. Uh, concerning the election officials, uh, we are now recruiting them. They are being interviewed in every district we have in uh, Ghana, and for that matter, Greater Accra region, all the district officers and the alternate officers are conducting interviews to make sure they select people who can actually and the election at the polling stations. And uh, everything is on course concerning the recruitment and the training because we always train them when it's about three weeks or so to the time so that uh, whatever they have learned will be fresh on their mind so that they will be able to execute whatever um, uh, we want them to do. What about the printing of the ballot papers and the printing of the polling stations. Has that already taken place or has it been delayed because of the court actions? Uh, the ballot papers are done after the uh, notice of poll have been uh, printed and then uh, posted. Uh, so the ballot papers uh, will come after, uh, after that and as I mentioned, uh, time is of essence and the commission will definitely know how to go about some of this so that everything will be on course. Okay. What about security at the polling stations? There have been instances of violence at polling stations in the Brongahafu region and the eastern region as well. What is being done by the EC to ensure that the electorate can vote peacefully without any threat of violence hanging over their heads? Uh, yes, we see uh, violence has been a bother to all, all of us because uh, election, as we always say, is a, a collective and a shared responsibility. We all have a part to play. And so the commission... Uh, we are concentrated on the actual administration of the election and the security aspect, we lead, we lead it for the security personnel to handle that. We have identified some flashpoints uh, because of uh, uh, what happened in previous activities we have conducted. And we have given them to the security personnel and I'm sure it will inform the strategies that they will put in place so that come the election day, uh, everything will be well handled so that uh, all voters can go to police stations and vote in a very peaceful uh, election environment. So what is the current uh, sec uh, security arrangement for the polling centers? And with those areas which are the flashpoints, can you name a few and also what is being done uh, to, as far as security is concerned over there? Uh, this is a security issue, so I wouldn't like to go into details by naming the police stations. What we have done is to give it to security personnel. They have to know the de details and then they will actually strategize in such a way that they will be able to mind these polling stations very well. Right then, so uh, that's for the EC and the concerns about what the lawsuits would mean for the election and their preparations towards December 7. Jennifer, we also know that this was a program for uh, the media to interface with the EU and the Electoral Commission on preparations for the elections. Mm -hmm. What's been some of the concerns being raised by the media about how we're, we're carrying or covering the elections? Well, as far as coverage is concerned, um, the, the reaction that we received from one of the panelists during the workshop was that the Ghanaian media is doing quite well. However, there was the caution that there should be more care, care, more care should be taken when it comes to the kind of language which is presented. Um, there should be more focus on temperate language, on language which doesn't incite violence, on, on actions or behavior that um, you know, impedes uh, justice or creates this kind of system of tension or something in the country during, especially during this election period. So there was that call for uh, media practitioners to be more careful about the kind of statements being printed out from those on the political trail and also on media practitioners to know exactly what the issue is so that we can explain it well to the public instead of it being used uh, as a means of propaganda during, uh, for politicians during the, their political campaigns. Okay, we can hear from one of the panelists today. Past six over ten, we are doing very well, but we need to uh, 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 double up 
we are doing very well, but we need to double up. We are missing some of the points, but uh, it's part of the process, it's part of the learning process, uh, so we need to double up. But uh, getting to the, we are in the semi-finals now, if you want me to say in football terms, we are in the semi-finals now. So this time, everybody is very, very high read uh, with the disqualification of some of the candidates too. We, the media, have to be extra careful how we even interpret why they were uh, disqualified, because these are rules and regulations. And we cannot say that somebody has violated a legal requirement, so we should use administrative procedure to remedy the legal requirement. We need to understand the system so that we can educate the public very well. But we are not focusing too much on issues, so we need to focus on issues. Fortunately for us, some of the parties have learned their manifestos. We need to come out with what they are saying in their manifest, interrogate issues the more. We are also allowing them to go free on some of the promises that they are coming out. There are wild uh, uh, promises on platforms. We need to interrogate them. We need to interview them the more. Uh, that is why I think we need to focus more. You're still watching The Pulse on the Joy News channel on Monty TV. Well, in politics, there's more to report because the disqualified presidential aspirant of the All People's Congress, Hassan Ayariga, he's heading to court uh, over his dis disqualification from the contest. Yesterday, he told us here on the show that enough paperwork he has shows that the commission accused him of wrong things, of a deliberate ploy to exclude some aspirants, including him, Hassan Ayariga. He spoke to us um, on the show yesterday. Well, throughout today, lawyers from Mr. Araga have been busy putting together their paperwork to begin the legal action. Razak Opoku is General Secretary of the APC. He's been helping out with the preparation of the duty. He joins us now online with more. Mr. Poku, good afternoon to you. Okay, uh, we're trying to reach Mr. Poku on the line now. If we do, we'll bring you that interview. And I get to understand what's accounting for this, especially when they say that the option will not be the High Court, but rather the Supreme Court on the issues raised by the Electoral Commission. You heard him yesterday here on the show with the issues you raised. But Mr. Boku is now on the line. Uh, he's the General Secretary of the APC. Mr. Boku, thank you for joining us today. Mr. Boku, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Great. Now, we're learning that uh, the APC is preparing a legal suit against the Electoral Commission at the Supreme Court. Have you filed the suit yet? Yes. Um First of all, good afternoon to your chair listeners. Um, as you rightly put, the APC has finished all the process uh, to proceed to court, for the court to uh, overturn the decision of the Electoral Commission. So today, our lawyer finished with all the process, and we hope that, uh, God willing, uh, tomorrow, uh, we will file with the court for the court to expedite action um, on the APC mark. So you're so saying that you have not filed a suit yet? He said. Am I to understand that you haven't filed the suit yet? Yes, we've finished all the today. And uh, hopefully by tomorrow, uh, by 12 o'clock, we should, we should file with the court. Okay. Now, what reliefs are you seeking with the suit? Uh, we are seeking... Um, what we are trying to seek is for the court to stop the balloting, uh, the balloting process, and secondly, for the court to look into our matter and um, bring our candidate, give us a, 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 you know an opportunity for Dr. Sanyarga to be back into the presidential race. So this we are seeking first to put. And the judge of the balloting process to suspend the process to the final determination of the case. And for the court also clear APC and give us an opportunity to correct whatever errors the Electoral Commission is talking about. We consider it purely administrative errors that can be corrected within two minutes. Uh, so we, the court to give us opportunity to rectify all whatever anomalies the EC was talking about and also apply 
the law of natural justice and also proper interpretation of the CI-94 so that any day we are very confident that any day the chair uh, the will give the APC or clear the APC and compare the electoral commissions to accept our candidate back into the presidential race. Okay, now, I'm just curious. Why are you sending the suit to the Supreme Court and not the High Court? Uh, the reason why we are sending it to the APC Court is uh, waiting that we want the matter. We don't want a situation whereby the High Court uh maybe if they take a decision and you are not happy about it, you have to go to another higher court before you get to the Supreme Court. So we are starting from the AP court. Whatever decision they will take, uh then we can also review at the Supreme Court level. So waiting that our case, the Supreme Court will be the best court to hear our case. Okay. Now with this release that you're seeking at the Supreme Court Considering the time we have left, are you not trying to hold the entire electoral process and holding the whole country to ransom? No, we, 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 we are not trying to do that. We are fighting for um, our, our interest for the party. We are fighting for uh, a, a common uh, justice to be made because even if uh, the electoral commission, I don't think that the electoral commission can conduct the 2016 election without any uh, error, because the election can never be 100% perfect. So if the EC want to disqualify political parties based on mere administrative errors, for us, it's, it's quite unfortunate, because uh, in the process of the election, no matter what, there will also be errors that will be committed by the Electoral Commission. So should it also be a basis to reject the whole outcome of the uh, Electoral uh, results? So I think the EST could have been compassionate enough, give an opportunity to the party to at least correct those clerical or administrative errors so that all of us can have peace and proceed. Because it's not good for the EC to take an entrained position okay. regarding the enforcement of the law. Right. Because if the EC wants to enforce the law, why didn't they enforce the why didn't they enforce the political party law 2574? Okay. Very law that regulates registration and operation of political parties. So the EC cannot pick and choose the laws they think they want to implement, the laws mm -hmm. they think they want they don't want to implement. So it's all of us um, seeking justice in a way to deepen our multi-party democracy. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mogu, for your time. Razak Opoku is, is the General Secretary of the APC. They're heading to court tomorrow. All the processes have been done today. Tomorrow, they're heading to the Supreme Court to stop uh, the balloting to be done by the Electoral Commission. Let's see how this plays out at the courts tomorrow. Still staying with politics, the former Member of Parliament for Bolgatanga, David Apasera, has accused the Chairman of the PNC, Benadmona, of working in the interest of another political party. At a press conference in Accra earlier today, Mr. Pacera accused Mr. Mona as reason for the rejection of the nomination of the presidential candidates of the party by the EC. He wants Mr. Mona to step down as chairman of the party. He is the one who directed that my name should be taken off. How do you know? Nobody can do it without him. But do you have evidence to prove this fact? I am saying that he... If you are a head of administration of a party, who can do such a thing without your, your knowledge? Who can do that, such a thing without your blessing? Did you get anyone in the party to tell you that he did that? I believe that he did it. But do you have evidence to prove? Yes, I mean, the, the thing is that I am head of a party machinery. I know we are looking for parliamentary candidates. We have only 65. People are fielding 275. And we have 65. Less than half of the number of uh, uh, constituencies we have in Ghana. And we have somebody who is competent, who is capable of winning his seat. And then they strike off his name. You think that the head of the party is not aware? So what reasons were you given then? No reason has been given to me. Won't you say that this is just a personal issue that you may have with Mr. Mona, reason why um, you are, all of this is happening? Why would I have a personal issue? If, for instance, Because I you had, once took him to court, remember? Yes, I took him to court because he didn't file and he went to stand. 
he has maneuvered himself to take over a party leadership and then he is messing the party up. PNC has never won election since the inception of PNC. And you know that if you don't win power, you are a poor party. And people have still continued to remain faithful. Now they are dissolution. And I want them to know that we have to gather and salvage the party. All this because the name was struck out? Not because my name was struck out alone, but because the party, even the presidential candidate, is not there. And you want Bernard Muna to step down? He, he every, a person of conscience will step down. Not even I telling him, but a person of conscience who is there in the interest of his party will step down. But he's not the only chairman of a party whose presidential candidate was rejected by the EC. Others have their, their, their reasons, and we have our reason. And our reason, from the way our, our position is, we think he didn't play his role well. You think? We believe. You and who? Uh, with some others. Maybe people will be coming up with this same issue to you. That's Mr. Passera, and clearly uh, this is a matter that we will follow for you. In fact, we're, we're about to speak to the uh, National Channel of the PNC, Bernard Mona, uh, on this issue. We're yet to reach him on the lines. If we do, we'll bring that interview to you here on the show.